tonight. Sit tight, because the band is back together. On Breakdown, we love a good Eddie Jones quote, and soon we'll have a few of our own as the England coach joins the panel. Bodie and Blue about to debut. He smashed the Bronco test, but will he smash his old team? And will rugby learn from NRL's stellar opening weekend? The jury might still be out. Kia ora, hello and welcome to The Breakdown. Yes, what a fantastic show we have you tonight. Catching up with Eddie Jones, Bowden Barrett. It is great to be here in studio. We are back at Sky headquarters and the team, as Bernie said, we are all here. So John Kerwin, Mills Muliaina and over the weekend, JK. And I'm waiting for it. I'm looking forward to hearing <laughs> from you. Oh. It was back. We had live action. It, not the Bundesliga. The NRL returned for you. Was it just nice to watch some live sport again? Just a precursor to the Blues winning Super Rugby Aotearoa. We started the, at week one back in the but studio. But the Warriors, how good were they? Back-to-back -back sets. Like, even the Australian commentators were going off. It was brilliant. And how good was it just to sit back and watch live sport? I thought it was amazing. Did you find some time in the weekend, Mills? Or what was going on? No, I'm just keeping my, my, my powder dry until the, until the rugby union starts, man. I didn't find any time. I had to get a fence up. Done that and Hold on, hold on, wait, wait, wait. We had like eight weeks in lockdown. <laughs> you had all that time to put a fence up and you choose Queen's birthday There's weekend? No, there, I couldn't get any wood. Couldn't get, oh, any, couldn't, couldn't, couldn't couldn't get any wood. Out. All sorts of excuses, JK, but you talk about it. Super Rugby, Aotearoa. Not this weekend, but next for these players and teams we're going to hear from Bowden Barrett. They themselves must be a little bit nervous. It's been a while about how they're going to prepare and how close it is, the reality of rugby again. Look, the research I've done is everyone's just really excited. I think that the break that everyone's had from the game, people are working on their fitness, working on their game, and they're just ready to get back into it. So I don't think they'll be nervous. I think they'll be excited. I think what the players are nervous about in New Zealand is back-to-back -back New Zealand size <laughs> yeah. Is that what you're expecting? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's, that's, they've, they've talked about it over a number of years, haven't they? The fact that, you know, the, the New Zealand conference has always been the most physically, you know, demanding. And here we are now back to back for 10 weeks, you know, it's going to be a hard ask. I think it's that. I think it's the physicality in it that, that I'm looking forward to, the fact that they've trained hard individually, but, you know, now they've got to go out there and actually, you know, get amongst it and, uh, f physically. Well, no one is more excited about being back in studio than Bernadine Oliver Kerber. So uh, excited, I've already made my debut, right? Absolutely. <laughs> You're featured. You were, so, you were in there. Couldn't wait to let us know what's going on. I and knew I shouldn't news. have worn heels. You see, I had to leave like a minute early just to uh, shuffle right. into position. <laughs> You've been in bare feet for 12 weeks. <laughs> <laughs> Haven't we all? You're lucky I didn't turn up in tracky decks. <laughs> Look, New Zealand Rugby, they've confirmed what we've discussed on the show the last couple of weeks. Uh, key points, three of them for Super Rugby Aotearoa. No more draws. Golden point is in. Red carded players, they can be replaced after 20 minutes. And referees to enforce breakdown rules to create a faster, safer game. The team will be clean, keen uh, to climb into those adjustments, particularly with the, uh, the breakdown one. Well, look, it's, still, it's always going to be a challenge. The fact now the players have to make the adjustment for their mills. The fact they know the circumstances, particularly around the breakdown, if you're trying to get continuity, if you're trying to get speed of game, expectations will be when they go out there. There'll be some clarity. The discipline will be on the players, surely, to help the referees. Oh, if you look at those three rules, that's the one thing that's going to stand out because it's always the most con the hotly contested area, the, you know, the breakdown, JK. So getting clarity in that three weeks that they've had the build-up to is, is an absolute must. Yeah, one thing we spoke about too, which is really interesting, is there are about 18 rules at the breakdown, but there'll be two or three that are really important to the speed of the game. And I think that the coaches and the players need to come to the party. And if we stay on side, if we don't actually cheat at the breakdown, it's going to be faster. And Bernie, imagine that first golden point game. I mean, how exciting that will be as a fan to watch something like that play out. Absolutely. I tell you, exciting too is confirmation that the Farah Palmer Cup will kick off on August the 22nd. It is a revised competition. 13 teams will compete in North and South Pools in a seven-week round-robin format before two weeks of playoff matches. And while we have just 11 sleeps until Super Rugby Aotearoa kicks off, members of the Juarez team they're being encouraged to basically get contracts overseas. Remember, this is last year's Super Rugby finalist, but with COVID-19 halting Super Rugby as we knew it, this is almost becoming commonplace. We've already seen it happening in South Africa. 
And with regards to South Africa, there's still lots of chat around them leaving Senza. It is not diluting or going away at all. With fresh reports today, they could join Europe's Pro 14. Not invited to stay and play, though. The Sunwolves, confirmation yesterday, no place in the Aussie domestic competition for the Japanese franchise. It is not just the Aussie players who have taken a bit of a haircut. In Rugby Australia's phase one of its rebuild, the union has announced it'll cut nearly 50 jobs as it aims to save $5.5 million after flagging a $9.4 million loss for last year. That's a third of its workforce. And you know, when a company starts talking about phases, there's more to come. Lockdown limbo. It's over for South Africa. Team started training again today. South Africa rugby still hoping to get a domestic competition underway. No firm start date, though, for code in the UK, though their trainings resume today also. After their comp was mothballed, it looks like it's going to reunite at the end of July. And where are we at with the global calendar? Well, dialogue is continuing between the Six Nations and Sansa after announcing they were working together to create a, a complimentary, I think the word was, rugby calendar for the northern and southern hemispheres. They're going to meet again in a fortnight in Dublin to nut it out, nut out the scheduling, which will include the fate of the Premiership, the Top 14, the Pro 14, and, of course, World Rugby. Will there be any agreement? Will there be a revolutionary new global calendar? Will everyone be happy? You know, Jeff, they say you believe some of the people some of the time. Not all of the people all the time. Look, it's going to be really challenging. We know that. It's been challenging to date. But what I can look at, and I look at the seasons, guys, is the fact that I think New Zealand rugby would look at the July test matches and be pretty happy if they moved maybe to October. So all of a sudden, that window grows. The challenge would be, JK, when you start talking about the Six Nations and us playing a rugby championship early on in a season, it's going to be difficult for us to accept given we want to prepare our All Blacks as best we can for those sorts of games. Yeah, I, I mean, I just want to go into reading into the headlines that Bernie just mentioned. Super Rugby's, as we know, it's over. I mean, the Haguardis, where are they going to go and get a contract, Mills? There's no contracts available at the moment. But this world global game, I think, let's not get confused. We don't want more rugby. We just want windows that everyone can commit to because we don't need England coming down here at half half sort of strength. We want real competition all the time. So, big decisions, will they work it out together? I'm sceptical, to be honest. I'm just not sure that they're going to work it out, Mills. They never, you know? Well, it's going to, it's going to take time, you know? It's, and you, there's always going to be different things that, you know, you have to have compromise as well. But at least they've started that. They've started... You can always come out and have an excuse that the COVID-19, you know, has inhibited them to actually start these conversations. I'm glad they've got it going and got it going early. Well, the, the big thing for me is the, uh, the role the clubs are going to play in this conversation. The fact that Top 14, Pro 14 are part of this, Bernie. The fact that how are they going to shape the game? What influence are they going to want to have? What investment in the game are they going to want? Of course we know there's plenty of moolah at the moment up in the Northern Hemisphere. But I'll tell you what, I'm looking forward to hearing the perspective of our next guest because we have had no one agree to come on the breakdown <laughs> as quick as our next one. Whether it was Jim Kays, whether it was a breakdown, whether it was you, JK, I am not too sure, Bernie. He's clearly not busy at the moment, which is most unusual. He's arguably one of the most successful coaches in world rugby. He doesn't mince his words and makes regular headlines around the globe. Eddie Jones, the five foot eight Tasmanian born Aussie who coaches England and fell into coaching purely by accident, is both feared and revered. Eddie Jones is a phenomenal coach. Under Eddie and his fantastic coaching staff, they've really put us in place. Wherever you go, you leave the footstep. Masterminding has definitely gone on. He's been outstanding. We've got to get out there and play our game. Super 12 champions. It is England's grand This is the Nobody in front of him. Joe Poole. First time they've taken top tier rugby scout. Minasan Arigato Gazar Master. Everyone was tipping Australia to whitewash us, including your station. I saw your promo. That is how to put the record straight. Well, the coaching record speaks for itself. A pleasure here tonight to bring you Eddie Jones. And Eddie, look, it took you one minute to agree to come on the breakdown. I get the sense of, have you maybe missed the media? Have you missed time in front of the camera? And have you got something you want to get out there and talk about? <laughs> I miss the Kiwis, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how much we miss you after what happened last year, but look, this journey you've gone on as a coach and, and, and where you've got to right now, could you ever imagined yourself in a position where you are 
coaching England. Remember, of course, you played in Australia, you played for Randwick. The fact we know here in the Southern Hemisphere how we've looked upon English rugby. For you, what's it been like taking charge of that nation's uh, national side? Uh, well, it's a job I never thought I'd, I'd have. Um, and when it came about, given what had happened in 2015 World Cup, I thought it was a, a great opportunity to do something a bit different, um, and it has been. Um, and it's been, it's been good fun to put respect back in the English rugby. Eddie, from, from you know, looking, looking back on your time in Australia, we've been discussing just how Australia rugby is suffering terribly. I mean, we, we believed here that might have been happening a long, long time ago. When you were coaching, did you see some of these problems? And, and what would you do from an Australian rugby point of view to turn it around as quick as possible? Yeah, well, I think the, the track record shows there's been a fair degree of complacency. Uh, in Australian rugby, they've allowed things to drift along for a period of time. Yeah, you know, haven't paid a lot of attention to to player development and coach development, and I think that's really hurting them. But I think they've made a, a really wise decision in putting Dave Rennie on as, as the head coach, and I think yeah, you know, he'll bring a lot of steel, he'll bring a lot of desire back to the players, he'll galvanise the team, and I think they'll they'll go back to playing some really good rugby and. And that'll lift the spirits of Australian rugby. And then if the board can sort themselves out, you know, if they can get all their leather patches in the right places, they might be all right. Eddie, I want to go back to, to England. Now, obviously, crazy times at the moment. In terms of your planning, can you give us a bit of an insight about what that sort of looks like? You've, you've, you haven't completed the, the, the Six Nations. And is your players there that you've got to keep tabs on back in, uh, back in England? Yeah, look, we've got a squad of about 45 who the assistant coaches uh, weekly have discussions with. You know, we, we just make sure they're healthy. And, and the funny thing about nearly all the sports at the moment, uh, Mills, and you probably, uh, you know, you were a professional for a long time and, and the players now have had the opportunity for two months to train by themselves. Mm. And, it, and it seems like in every sport they're coming back in such great condition. You know, they've really enjoyed the opportunity to look after themselves. So we're, we're excited about the fact that we're going to get players back in, 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 better, in a better position than they were before. Well, on a fateful day last year, you, you put yourself in a position to be part of a Rugby World Cup final. Us in New Zealand will we'll want to talk about that semi-final tonight because when was the planning for you? Did you always believe you would probably have to go through the All Blacks in 2019 to win a Rugby World Cup? Was that the first hurdle and mental challenge you had to get over? Uh, yeah, well, I remember sitting in Kyoto and, and, and looking at the draw and it was quite obvious we were going to play, you know, all things being equal, we were going to play New Zealand in the semi-final and, and you've got to be at your best to beat New Zealand. So we had to aim to be at our best and our, and our challenge was then to get back up for the final, which we weren't able to do. Eddie, uh, I know you've always had strong opinions on the game and, you know, we, I, re I believe that world rugby is facing a challenge. There's one camp that says we should have this global game. Another camp of which I'm in says maybe less is more. One of the most exciting games for us in the last two years was actually going back to England to play because we hadn't been there for a couple of years. I mean, you've been around this game a long time. What do you think we need to regalvanise the game from a world point of view? Well, I think we need high quality rugby. Um, and I think the game's gradually moved along a track and hasn't been hasn't been looked at carefully enough. Yeah, you know, now we've got this game that's almost like NFL. Yeah, you know, we've got a test match that we're involved in generally goes for 100, 110 minutes, um, of which ball in plays 35 minutes, which hasn't really changed in the last 20 years. But the ball out of play has increased to 65 minutes now because of things that have been important in the game, uh, head injury assessment, TMO, uh, referees like to talk more. Um, so we've got this great ball out of play time now and we've got this small ball in play, which just exacerbated the fact with eight reserves that we've got such a power game now. And I think it's gone too far down the, the power line and we need to get some more continuity back in the game. Um, we need to make the game faster. And, you know, we were talking off air before, 
the NRL is a good example of what happens when you make one adjustment to a law and you change the game for the better. And, and it's definitely become less of a wrestle in the NRL and a, and a faster, more continuous game. And I think we need to make that adjustment in rugby. Eddie, I want to I want to talk about talk about the the referees talking, but off the field, um, there's always anticipation around your media conferences and things like that. And we love it. Some of the things you come up and say. We had Gets on, you know, saying that yeah, you know, uh, you, you get on really well and you fire a shot here, and and often, um, you know, it's read differently. But how much can we read into that and some of that stuff off the field? I mean, it's it's entertaining, but how much uh, how much truth can we actually read off that off the coach's banter? Oh, it's a bit of fun, mate. Um, you know, you got to you got to try to make it entertaining, don't you? Um, and there's sometimes you know you can have a beneficial effect on on how your team thinks and maybe put a thought in the opposition's head. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work. But I think you know we've got a we've got a job to make the game entertaining, nice. and entertaining, and uh, I think the head coach has got a responsibility to do that. Six Nations, Eddie. It's an amazing tournament. I was very fortunate to coach in it for a few years with Italy. A great event. But they're pretty staid in their ways. They don't want to move their timing. Do you think it's the right decision or can it move wherever it wants on the calendar and it won't lose its impetus or its tradition? Well, uh, uh, as you said, mate, it's a great competition. I've never coached in such an intense competition because every game means so much and, you know, you're playing against your next, next door neighbours and it, it means a hell of a lot to the country. Um, and it's such a, a traditional tournament. You know, pe I think people have got holidays booked to go to Rome for the next <laughs> 10 years. You know, it's, it's, it's that sort of event. Now, I think the opportunity now is, is for World Rugby to come up with a global schedule. And, and that's the exciting part because the game does need a restructure. You know, it's, it's just gone on since 1996 um, and it's, it's all over the shop. And, and the opportunity now is if we can get a really good global uh, schedule where the international win windows match up um, would be fantastic. Now, if that can happen, we're going to be in a good position. So if we get to those windows, Eddie, uh, is there an appetite for you to maybe go on tour a little bit more uh, with England? Maybe play some midweek games? We've done that when we've travelled to the Northern Hemisphere. We've found other contests to try and grow our squad. Rather than maybe the mooted national or, or uh, international tournament every year, I mean, is there a preference for you? Uh, well, the most fun I've had over the last couple of years is take, take England to Australia for three test series. <laughs> yeah, I thought that was fantastic because we won three 0 Obviously, it helps. <laughs> um, but but just the you know the drama of week in and week out playing over three week three week three test series, I think is fantastic. You know, we've got the problem our games play our players play about sixty games a year, so they don't need extra midweek games. <laughs> Would it be? Is it possible though, Eddie, to take a bigger squad and play on a Wednesday? You're thinking to be too distracting. I mean, we're, we're talking about traditional tours where, we're, where the All Blacks might come to, to, to England, play a test match and then play the, play the Saris the week after. And, you know, can you play midweek or would it have to be a drawn out tour where you play, you know, England, Saracens the following Saturday and then maybe the next Saturday, but bring back some of that localised traditional stuff? No, I think you could. And I think you could. And I think it'd be good for the game. I think, you know, we've got to make international rugby more accessible to the people because yeah you know, we play at Twickenham and 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 they said for the game against New Zealand they could have sold two million tickets. You know, it was that popular. And and if you've got the capacity to play some games midweek like New Zealand to play against to play against Saracens on a Wednesday night and just give an opportunity for more kids and, and for the rugby community to 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 look at the game. Um, so I think that idea's got a lot of merit. So if you, oh sorry, you go, you go. if you were in charge of world rugby, and I know you and I are probably some of the most opinionated people in the game, what's the one rule you would change then to speed it up? You watch more rugby than any man uh, I know. Uh, there'd be two. I'd have, uh, <laughs> I'd only have six reserves, and I reckon that'd make a hell of a difference. Because then you have your three front rows. You'd have to have one back row that would have to cover the back five, one half back and then one back that covers the rest. 
and I reckon that would introduce some fatigue in the game. And I'd also, from a scrum reset, I need to think this one through a bit, but I reckon we need to go to a differential penalty where you can't kick for goal, that you've got to take a quick tap or, or kick to the line. We've got to try to get some more movement in the game. Mm. This is coming from, I suppose, a Rugby World Cup where we've seen, like you say, it was dominated uh, physically. It was brutal through the course of that uh, competition and, and, and the success of some traditional teams at Rugby World Cup time. What you're talking about would be a significant change for a lot of sides. Have you seen that sort of growth? Is that growth there for the likes of South Africa and England who traditionally have been strong up front? And, and can you continue to grow your game? Yeah, look, I think... You know, any, any country can change its game. You know, we've seen New Zealand go from a 80% team and then under Graham Henry and Steve Hansen go to a 90% team, which is the most incredible record. Um, and how did they do that? I think Graham and Steve both benefited from coaching in Wales and brought back that, that consistency in the set piece. You know, New Zealand, when, when I coached Australia, we always had the opportunity to beat New Zealand by putting pressure on the line out. And now New Zealand's got one of the best line-outs in the game, so you can't get, get to them through the line-out. They've got a strong scrum, you know. And so ga their games evolved from being maybe a, a game based on just transition to a game that could be played at set piece and, and played through transition. And there's no doubt that England and South Africa could change their games accordingly. Well, Eddie, we're, we're about to start Aotearoa, Super Rugby Aotearoa next week. What are you anticipating seeing, you know, amongst the New Zealand teams, given you've, you've given all that about the All Blacks? Uh, just so many good young players, mate. I don't know how you do it there. No, I do, because you've got three of the biggest uh, academies in the world. <laughs> Fiji, Samara and Tonga. They're not bad, mate. <laughs> we were waiting for it. I was waiting for it. It was the fact we've been going, JK, and all of a sudden the shots. He couldn't help himself. He couldn't help himself. He was waiting for the opportunity. Yeah, no, but, but Eddie, the, the interesting thing is that now the Ireland teams have given the vote to... to to Bernard and, and Bill Beaumont, so maybe that swing will change, mate. You might be seeing a few more of the... Who knows? You know. <laughs> what I would want to talk about is the no. fact that you've had great success. You've had great success, and it's, it's talked about a lot, the fact the moment you get in an environment, you manage to get teams on a positive path straight away. You've done it wherever you have gone. What's the secret to that, when you get inside an environment to start that process, to get them moving forward? Uh... Well, I think, you know, one of the things that struck me over this last period is, is how much I've missed the game and how much I've missed coaching. So I think loving the, loving the game and, and loving coaching has helped. Um, and then I was lucky enough about a year ago to have uh, lunch with Louis van Gaal, the, the football coach, and he had this beautiful way of explaining it. And I think that's what I've always followed, but he said it in a much better way than me. He said that everyone in their head's got a picture of the perfect game, how you want to play the game. You know, and, and we'd all have that sitting around this room now, you know, how you really want to play the game. Then you get your group of players and you think, right, what are their strengths? Now, how do I have to adapt my image of the game to the strengths of the players? Because, you know, the great thing about rugby and the thing that hasn't changed, it's always been a player's game. Um, and, and even more now, I think, with all the decision-making that's in the game has become more and more a player's game. So the ability to, to understand your players, get their strengths out is, is just so important. Uh, one last question. Who are you looking forward to playing again the most? Is it the All Blacks? Is it South Africa? Are you looking for a repeat? Are, are, are you want to crack at that? Who for you right now as you're waiting and, and like you say, you're missing the game... Who do you want to see on the other side of that pitch? Uh, well, you never get the World Cup back, but it's always great to beat New Zealand. <laughs> <laughs> and on that note, firing another shot. Well, thank you so much, Eddie. Appreciate your time, as always. Um, Thanks, look, you're, an entertain Cheers. you're entertaining and uh, never stop being that way. It's great to see. Thanks very much. Thanks, Royce. Cheers. Thank you. Thanks. Cheers. Thank yeah, you. Mate. Couldn't help himself.
Couldn't help himself. Some great stuff coming from Eddie Jones, JK, but I look at it, the fact that he has missed us, I reckon, Mills. The fact, an opportunity to fire just a couple of shots. How good is that type of personality for the game of rugby union? Oh, outstanding. We probably walked into a couple of them. We set ourselves yeah, sure. up, evidently. Uh, but it is. It's great to, to hear his, his opinion on, on certain things. And he's always vocal about, about it. He's not, he doesn't, he's not one a person that shies off the, the controversy, um, JK. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting. You said it's a player's game and... and but are, are we not asking people like him and listening to them to make changes to our game? I had lunch with him last year. He brought the English team on camp to Treviso, where I live in Italy. And I went out for lunch with him. He asked me more questions than I asked him. And I'm going, mate, I, I don't coach anymore. In fact, the last job I had, I lost. Why would you be asking me? But he was interested in every single little detail. I mean, that fatigue issue, right? And I've been thinking about the game a lot lately, but actually, I'd never thought about reducing the bench so that fatigue mm. comes into it. I mean, the NRL was about fatigue on the weekend, right? It was so much more action because it was about fatigue. And so he's right. The game has changed. We've turned it from an amateur. I mean, you guys are probably a bit younger than me. We used to have to go for long runs. You know, they don't do that in rugby anymore. It's not a, you know, it's a power-based amazing basically. how we start going for long runs when we get older, thinking that'll work? <laughs> No, now for us, run. and it still won't. Oh, you don't do, you no, don't I don't do that. Run. No. Look, it, it's interesting you talk about that fatigue side of things, and and for me it's interesting, Mills, because you're talking about England and South Africa, two powerhouses, two teams who made it to a Rugby World Cup final on the back of outstanding defence, dominant forward packs. He's talking about opening up the game, mm. bringing in fatigue. That, in some ways, would put his team under stress. Is that a surprise to hear you say, him say that? I think, it, it, well, just sort of reading in between the lines, perhaps a different type of fatigue, you know, the, the physical ones, where they're actually just mauling you, you know, right down to the ground and actually taking that game away from him. I think when you still look at it, opening the game up, he's talking about, you know, keeping it going, the, the flow of the game, you know, going. So when you look at it, opening it up, we're probably the best in the world at that, you know, that trans transitional um, sort of play. But in terms of the, the fatigue, I think you're right. You know, taking one person out of, of the bench, all of a sudden to coaches tactically, and that's been a real strength of the All Blacks and, and, and also New Zealand New Zealand teams for the last sort of five or so years. Being able to go to their bench and, and sort of accelerating through that. So now without that, that one player, man, how much of a difference would that make? And, and I like his appetite for touring. We pushed him a little bit on it because we know there are some big meetings coming up, JK, in terms of forming this game. I get the sense he would like to take his English team on tour. And you've always talked about the fact it's not necessarily about quantity. It is about quality. And I think we need to be really careful because there's a perception out there that the global having a global calendar means playing more against England. And that's why it's not. It's actually aligning the calendars so that when we do have an international window, it is a good one. But that doesn't mean that we play England, Ireland and Wales. We might go and tour Ireland. But I think... The biggest point for me was that, you know, we are just, we're always just tweaking the game instead of making some courageous decisions and actually making a game faster. Eddie Jones, 108 minutes, 65 minutes of dead ball, 30 minutes. Like you're going, that needs to be addressed. Yep. And I know here in New Zealand we'd like to see it. It's whether or not some of the changes we've already seen from New Zealand rugby going into Super Rugby Aotearoa, they can actually maybe get that ball and play a little bit more. It's not that far away. Your favourite teams are going to be in action. The big question mark will be, how are you going to watch them? What we've done here tonight. We've got all of us, the team, we're at home. How are we going to, when we're sitting on the couch, how are we going to go and watch these games? What's our fan zone look like? Let's start with JK. What does it look like for him coming up when Super Rugby Aotearoa starts? Things, things that you need. Um, blanket, fui fui moi moi footy and one of these. Need one of these for replay. Oh, there's the Warriors. How good were the Warriors? Oh, go the Warriors. Go the Blues. How good is this? Oh, yeah, by the way, no one else. No disturbance. Gold dust. Fui, fui, fui. Watch the footy, mate. I heard a slight little Chiefs manner in there. Oh. Is that what I heard? My household's divided. Joe's studying in Dunedin. I'm played for the Chiefs and the Blues. We've got a, my, my oldest son supports the Blues. And the young fella there, the middle guy, he's a Chiefs mother fan through and through. Oh, game on. I cannot wait. You're going to see from myself and from Bernardines a little bit later on on the show. But after the break, the Blues' newest recruits, the two-time World Player of the Year, Bowden Barrett. Barrett now. Spots a hole. 
Someone get past him. It's Conrad Smith. Conrad Smith to score. What drama. Now Barrett has a crack himself. Bowden Barrett. Straight to kick. Looks at Phil. Got it on Murphy. Picked up by Bowden Barrett. See you later. Under the bar he goes. Now they swing it away to the left. And Bowden Barrett. And welcome back to the breakdown. Yes, after 125 games for the Hurricanes, Bowden Barrett is poised to make his debut for the Blues in a couple of weekends' time. Great to have him on the breakdown with us tonight. And Bowden, yes, we know about that history. But how have you coped with the fact that you've had to wait that little bit longer? You were going to play six, seven, eight weeks ago. How have you coped with the fact you've had to wait for this first opportunity to wear blue? Yeah, I'm pretty good at um, waiting. I guess it's been a good break, and then uh, I just had to push it back a, a few months. So, um, yeah, it was a great time off that I had. And, um, yeah, during COVID, I just made sure that I stuck to the plan that Pies, our trainer, gave us. And, um, yeah, I'm feeling pretty good. Can't wait to get into it. Bowden, welcome. Thank you, mate. <laughs> I just throw that out there. <laughs> I, uh, I, um, He's almost crying. Oh, He's almost yeah, crying. You haven't played a game yet. Pretty <laughs> emotional, mate. Pretty emotional. Listen, you know, often the public hear about these breaks that the players at the highest level have. I talk to the players. They say it's an amazing moment in their career to get the break. So is it mental or physical the most enjoyable part about the break? Um, it's mostly mental, like... Uh, even throughout the break, I was training quite a bit because that's what we're used to and um, I feel that's what our body needs. Um, so it's more the mental break of getting away to do things that I haven't been able to do before and, um, you know, have a day without thinking about footy, uh, which is quite difficult to do. So, um, yeah, I think a lot of players will benefit from the small break that they've had during COVID, which will hopefully um, prolong their careers and... Um, yeah, it is so important to have these breaks, I think. I tell you, you've come back, you've talked about the mental side and been refreshed, but physically, I mean, you're hissing in the old Bronco, but your shoulders look a little <laughs> bit bigger now too. Maybe you're getting amongst it in terms of the physicality? Mate, um, yeah, like I said, I was training pretty hard in the lockdown because there's nothing else to do, but um, I'm good to know one. I can run a fast Bronco, but as soon as I have to do a few tackles and some pick and goes, which we did 100 metres of the other day, oh, one of Tom oh. Coventry's drills, I think, it was unbelievably hard. Coaches, I couldn't run anywhere. Coaches <laughs> find a, a way pretty quickly to get you back down to earth. You've been in that environment now inside the Blues. What have you noticed about that group? I, I grab that, that, that group of players. It's been extremely positive. I think uh, Leon and Tana have done a great job and Tom and the other coaches um, creating a competitive environment and uh, the culture's great. Everyone gets along and, um, you know, everyone's equal. So I think Paddy's done a great job leading uh, well as well. So I'm excited to get amongst. So I've really enjoyed training. Um, but, yeah, we're not too far away from kickoff, so can't wait. The... You know, you're a, one of our leading All Blacks now, Bowden. You're, you, you know, you're in the leadership group. I mean, is, the Blues would want you to lead straight away. Is it a hard thing to do coming into a new team? I mean, do you feel a bit of hesitation or do you just go, I've got a job to do, I need to lead straight away? Because it's not easy, you know? Oh, look, um, I'm extremely aware that I can't come in and be so vocal uh, straight away. I can lead as I do with my actions and not change anything that I do. It's just being a bit aware of the, the leaders in that environment and allow them to be the main voices. But um, yeah, it's been more unit meetings uh, where I'd be a bit more vocal and then slowly building up um, on the field. Um, but yeah, that is quite tough at times. Um, 
finding situations where I want to say something, but I have bit my tongue. But I think the boys have been so welcoming and I'm sort of at the point now where um, if I have something to say, I'll say a good deal with the team that they respect that now. Um, whereas initially I was a bit more aware that, hey, I've got to do a bit of time here. I've got to slip back and, and see how things roll. roll. Bodie, you couldn't have picked a better better start to the Super Rugby Old Town or playing against your old, old teammates. I mean, now you're going to have, obviously have a bit of banter during that uh, that week, but sort of what influence do you have in terms of you know um, you know I suppose telling the coaches, the Blues coaches, that is, you know how the, sort of the similarities they might have in, the, in their play. Yeah, it's um, look, Dan, Leon, and the coaches have done a great job analysing the Canes and um, through that. I guess what I've told them isn't too much more than what they already know. So, um, you know, they haven't changed the way they play dramatically. So um, it's probably more around personnel and um, understanding the behaviours of my former teammates that I can pass on those experiences with. OK, Bowden. Uh, look, we had Geordie on the, on the show last week and he was pretty coy about the matchup coming up. But you've played against Scott before. I mean, is this, is this a different type of rivalry, the fact that you're, you're two backs, the fact that, you know, there's, he has a, a tendency to get a little bit angry sometimes, Geordie, when he's on the field. I mean, uh, I mean, how much are you looking forward to that challenge? And, you know, at the moment, where do the bragging rights sit between you two? Yeah, look, he's a, he's a big boy now. Um, it's been a while since I used to make him cry at home in the backyard. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, it's going to be a good matchup. And, um, yeah, hopefully I can get out there on the park, of course. Can't take anything for granted. But, uh, yeah, there's nothing like playing with Scott. I didn't actually bump into him, or I don't bump into him too often, being a, a big brute in the front, uh, second row, whereas in the backs we do clash a fair bit. So there may be a few, um, few contacts. Been a while, Bowden, so what are you looking forward to the most about getting out there again? Gosh, hopefully a uh, reasonably full Eden Park would be great. Um, <laughs> you know, I'm sure we can get there if we uh, do the right things. But um, look, just playing footy, competing, uh, there's nothing like taking the field um, and competing in a, in a match and... You know, it's going to be extra significant being against my old mates. So, um, yeah, I just I just can't wait. I've done so much training up until this point. So, um, yeah, can't wait to rip into it and uh, put on the Blues jersey for the first time, hopefully. What's, what's more daunting for you right now then? Making that first tackle or changing that first nappy in September, mate? <laughs> oh, jeez. I must say, I'm... I'm a bit more daunted about changing an epi than a, a tackle. <laughs> Unless it's a Nani Lomapi or Ben Lamb. <laughs> <laughs> you've, had the, you've got the right advice. You've got the right advice 100%. Look, what should the fans expect of this competition? Because we've seen what derbies are like. We know these, when teams get up against each other, how physical they could be. What do you, when you look at Super Rugby Aotearoa, what are you hoping the players are able to deliver? Oh, look, we want to... I think every team wants to play a game that's fun to play and therefore you'll see a fair bit of ball being thrown around and playing that expansive, exciting game we all love to play and watch. So um, the thing is we understand each other so well, um, play reasonably uh, similar shapes and structures. So, um, you know, it's those counter-attacking moments, those turnover opportunities that everyone gets excited about and... Um, yeah, hopefully with afternoon rugby too, that'll add to, um, you know, a little bit more ball being thrown around and uh, the ball won't be as wet or it won't be dewy. So that's going to be great. But and I'll just flick to the All Blacks now. I know, you know, the, the pain of losing the World Cup hurts. You've had a lot of time to think about it. I mean, what have you reflected on and what do you want to change moving forward in the All Black jersey? Um, well, look, we've got a a new opportunity with um, some experienced players moving on and um, really excited to get behind Sammy Kane as a, a, a new leader. So um, we'll, when we get together, we'll certainly learn from um, 
that English game and, and find ways where we can grow our own. So, yeah, there's nothing like getting together for the first time. Um, there's so much excitement, especially after playing and beating each other up for a number of weeks mm. in Super Rugby. So, um, yeah, and of course, Fozzie is head coach and, um, you know, a new coaching team. I think there, there will be some significant changes. But... But there's been a, uh, some, some new rule changes come out. How much of that have, um, have been an influence in terms of the detail that you've, you've got from, from your trainings? Sorry, mate, I just lost you for a bit there. Sorry, mate, I said uh, just, um, just there's a couple of rule changes that, that have come on board. Uh, sort of how much detail have you guys have and sort of clarity around that area in terms of opportunities uh, you know, for your team? Yeah, um, Tom addressed that. Uh, a couple of weeks ago and yeah it's around the breakdown it, it does affect the the Lucy's a fair bit um gosh it was a while ago it doesn't affect me too much <laughs> you'll have to probably I'll have to look at my notes again but <laughs> hopefully it enhances the game that we want to play and that's um you know attacking positive rugby and that announcement tonight of course the fact that all of a sudden golden points on the table you know, the, the fact that all of a sudden the desperation of teams to, to get yourself in that position, does that mean all of a sudden a few more extra drop goals at training? Yeah, I mentioned drop goals. You see? <laughs> Potentially. Yeah. I've been practising, so you know. That's what I like to hear. Look, thank you so much, <laughs> Bowden. Uh, look, I, I think we're hopeful next week that uh, when we hear from the government, maybe... If we are down to level one, there's an opportunity to get those fans in behind you because they've waited so long. Great to see you. Thanks very much. Talk to you soon. Cheers, guys. Thanks very much. Uh, you were almost in tears to start that. The fact oh, I got, that, a, bit know, of, I got I a bit emotional. You did a bit emotional. Yeah, I, I mean, you were trying for a long time to get a first five. But you look at what he's going to add. And we're going to get this... We're going to get in depth next week as we start talking about who we think could go on and win this competition because it's going to be intense. But how much is that young man going to add to what has been already a big shift in the Blues in 2020? Well, I flew to Taranaki with Graham Henry and we sat down with Bowden and Smiley, Bowden's dad, um, to try and get him to come to the Blues. Uh, you know, I think the backbone of any rugby team needs to be really strong to a good lock, an eight, a nine and a ten and a 13, and, I, and the th thing about Bowden is he is X Factor. He can be having a quiet game and then boom, he will change the game for you. So you think about this. <laughs> Here we go. Think about this, You've people. been dreaming about this. The Blues team with confidence because at the right moment, Bodie does the right thing and scores a try. So, phew. So no, it doesn't take anybody over. else, just Bodie, <laughs> that's it. No, no, what I'm saying is, at the right moment, when maybe you're under the pump and, you, and you know, you're starting to lose confidence, he does those things that change the game, that little chip over the top no one was waiting for. And that will give the rest of the guys around him that belief because he brings belief. I believe. You believe. You believe, mate. You, and so last time, you, well, you won a Super Rugby title with the Blues, so that's what you may be hopeful they can do again. Well, I think, I think it's set up nicely for him. You know, he's, been, he's supposed to be out of the game for a long time without, you know, actually sitting there watching the game. Now, all of a sudden, you know, that COVID-19, he's come back in, he's right in amongst it. He doesn't have to come in for a team full of confidence. So he's been amongst that team for, you know, for the last six or so weeks. And you're right, he's X-Factor, but he, he brings that skill set that sort of no-one else has. You know, it's not a fluke when he chips it over the top. Or it's not off the cuff. He does it because his skill set is, is, is right up there. Well, his skill set's up there. And it's a matter of who's going to have the best fan zone. That's what I want to know. We've seen yours, JK. We've seen yours, Mills. Let's look at Bernie and let's look at mine. Because I tell you what, there's a vision on mine that I'd love to see again in Super Rugby Aotearoa. Let's look at Bernie's first up as we play through. Right, you've got your snacks, you've got your devices. You know what to do. Quiet, please. <laughs> I I'm surprised you didn't see. You, you didn't have one of these, JK. I was, thought you might have had this, but this is what I'm looking for. If you look closely, I'm pretty sure. Oh, I think that's the Highlanders. And yeah, that that must be a Super Rugby title. That's it's a Super Rugby title. That is what I am hoping for. Why are you drinking beer out of a wine glass? What's that? <laughs> Why are you drinking beer out of a wine glass? <laughs> yeah, it's the best use of any glass. <laughs> oh, that's interesting. pure and simple. Yeah. All right, there's plenty for us to look forward to here on Sky. Don't forget the pod. Sky Sport presents one of our very, very, very best athletes, Dame Susan Tavoy. We hear from her this week and talks about her role in New Zealand sport. She catches up with Tony Johnson.
Well, firstly, if you're not an Olympic sport in New Zealand, you've got diddly squat of getting anything. So, you know, based on the performances of Joelle and Paul at the Commonwealth Games, squash got an extra $25,000, which is not minimal. And most of the high performance funding that squash gets goes to Joelle and Paul, and that's fine too, but there's nothing there to develop the rest of our players. So in many ways, they contradict themselves, I believe, because they're saying we want children to participate in sport and we know that the numbers are dropping, that children are not playing organised structured sport anymore, you know, and that's fine, that's what they choose to do, but does it mean that they're still being active and why are they not doing that? Um, and we're looking at the ways that, you know, people coach and people parent and doing all sorts of things. But in the next breath, our high performance are paying lots of money to people who have already made it. Welcome back to The Breakdown. As the wheels begin to turn for the resumption of code, World Rugby Chair Bill Beaumont has said that rugby will only be able to return with absolute confidence when there's a vaccine in place for coronavirus. With that possibly years away, the statement really does little to encourage the next wave of players, does it, or for those already in the game to want to stay there. World Rugby can't offer a vaccine, but they have offered up 10 temporary law trials or law changes which can be trialled, and it's about keeping players safe in these COVID-19 times. They all revolve around the scrum, the tackle, the ruck and the moor, and we've plucked out three of them. So the first one we're going to pluck out, no scrum option for a penalty or a free kick. So World Rugby thinks that this will provide around two minutes reduction time of close proximity play. Remove choke tackle and reward for defensive team and ruck use it duration time decreased from five seconds to three seconds so that immediately speeds up play and again less close contact. Now as I said these are optional law trials, they are not compulsory, rate them or hate them team. Well, all of this is, is interesting is the fact they've tried to put these together, JK, to try and protect players and the fact this is in a COVID environment where there is still some sort of threat. New Zealand Rugby's already talked about the fact they're not that is, coming. They're, they're not going to use the, these. Sorry to jump in, but that is the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen. Have we not been watching the whole world for 12 weeks? Once we put two teams out on the field put two teams into a changing room. That is ridiculous. I cannot believe... <laughs> it's like the rule, let's change the rules. OK, let's change putting the, the ball on the goalpost rule. Oh, wow, that's going to change our game, isn't it? Well, that is ridiculous. I can't believe that. I that was Has a he hoax. not been watching... The, do you thought it was a joke? I thought it was a, I, I, is it a joke? I, I, is someone taking a joke? No. No, we're not taking a joke. This is an important announcement from World Rugby about t trying to get the game going. Look, I, I think it's just... And you think they're going to meet in two weeks and change our game well, now after about, that? Yeah, well, I mean, I, I think, Please. for me, I don't think we want any confusion here. I mean, that, and that's the, the reality, is that I can understand what they're trying to do, but our game is our game, right, Mills? The way that... The, the contest that is Rugby Union. If you want that, you know, I, I think... Don't you, go back and play. Well, I, it, I mean, it's if just, you're not ready, you're not go, ready, right? Like, those... Honestly, I'm with you. I think it's a joke. <laughs> because, like I said, if you've followed the whole 10 weeks, if you'd listened to our government, if you'd listened to our medical officer telling us what you need to do, OK, so why don't we just, well, play touch with, with a metre bar? That would make more sense than that. We would have liked that. Well, we all love that. <laughs> <laughs> right up our alley, right up our alley. But uh, let's look at this game, and you mentioned it already in the show, JK, about we saw on the weekend what a change in a law can do in a game. And for the NRL, the repeat six, the fact that, OK, in the middle of it, so no penalty, no stoppage in the game, the continuity of the game. And this is what Eddie Jones was talking about as well. All of a sudden, you saw back-to-back six con uh, continuously, Mills. Is this the sort of innovation that we need? Not necessarily this, but do we need to find a way to create that fatigue? Well, it's evident, isn't it? That's what, that's what everyone's saying. Eddie mentioned it before. It's the fatigue factor and then the skill set under fatigue. Defensively, you know, you've got to, if you're giving away that penalty or you're thinking 50-50, well, all of a sudden, your line speed's not coming up on, on defence. So that, when, where does that open it up? It opens up a bit of space. So fatigue factor, you know, really comes in. And now it's up to, you know, coaches and that to think, wow, man, how can we play this game? The S&C &S becomes very, very crucial person now. You've talked about a number of things already, though, JK. They've, they've talked about the breakdown that was launched today, the fact that they're going to try and police that stronger. I'll be interested in the offside line, the fact that how much they prepared to do it. But we've also saw from Eddie Jones, he mentioned maybe reducing the impact of the reserves on a game and the fact 
Is it something that now is the time that we have to strike? The fact that we have to make an impact, the game of rugby union, on our fans? OK. New Zealand, it makes me feel like New Zealand Rugby Union have been trying to get these laws that we're going to introduce for Super Rugby Aotearoa past the IRB or World Rugby for the last five years, probably. But it's too political. I mean, those statements about COVID is ridiculous. What the NRL do, which is, I love, is they listen. They go, OK, two, co two referees, we tried it, didn't work out. Let's ditch that. Oh, let's try a repeat of six. And they do it very quickly. They have the courage to make change. And if they're wrong, they go backwards. Why are we so scared to change our game a bit dramatically to make it faster? Uh, I suppose that's the luxury, you know, having that one, uh, one competition. When you're, when you're out, out and about, you've got to convince everyone else, you know, under, under a global sense, that's when, it, you know, there's a little bit while give and take, you know, depending on their, their own sort of political needs. So we talk about our game, and we talk about some of the things. The introduction of Golden Point, the fact that that's been brought in today, I think it's a great addition. The fact that we all know what it feels like, Mills, when you get a draw in a contest. Oh, man, it's, you're under the pump. You know, when you're when someone, um, you know, setting up for a, a drop goal and you're, you're going back, so all you want to do is get your hands on the ball, JK, and then, and then when you see someone that's very good at drop goal... Job kicking, wow, gee. It becomes like soft. knockout football, right? Yeah, but you've got to get a winner. You've got to Look, get and there's another thing I'd change very quickly. I wouldn't have lifting in the line-out. Right? We brought that in when professionalism come in because that's what they're doing in, in South Africa. Can you imagine throwing the ball back in just down the middle? Jump. It'll go. I mean, it just makes the ball li alive more. But I think, you know, New Zealand Rugby Union is leading the way again and they're having the courage to lead the way. Rugby Aotearoa, that's probably against the laws of the game to change the laws without going political. But the thing you said, Mills, is so right. Our game has got too political about looking after our own patch. Our game needs to come together and make the right rules for the global game. Well, we not for you whether you've got a big forward pack or not. Well, the challenge for you guys is to come next week prepared to tell me who's going to win the Super Rugby Aotearoa competition because we're going to have five quality teams. But for you at home... Set up your fan zone. Send your pictures or videos in to us, because I tell you what, it's an innovation here in, at Sky that we're considering and looking, bringing this into live action. You could have a camera in your house during a game, and we might cut to you as you are celebrating a try from the Blues, the Chiefs, the Highlanders, the Hurricanes, or the Crusaders. He's got his finger up. He's got something he wants to say. I want to put one in the Barrett's house. Oh, <laughs> yeah, nice. Hey, and... <laughs> <laughs> Don't forget some of our stars, though. Isolation Nation, as well, is still ongoing. Kirsty's doing a fantastic job with Israel Dag. That's the breakdown. We'll see you in seven days back here.